Hello and welcome to the adventures of the Inglorious Bards. I'm your cordial game master, Tom, and this is episode 15, Clock Tower. As always, thank you for joining us on our adventures. We're excited to share them with you. Drop by ingloriousbards.com in our Podbean account and leave us a message and let us know what you think of the show. In the last adventure, the heroes took down the mercenary group, the Ivory Swords, in a bloody massacre. After returning to the city, our adventurers began searching for Sanor, the clockwork tinkerer they believed to have the dangerous artifact known as the Grey Ascent. They scoured the city library and found clues that pointed towards Sanor. Now they are on their way to speak with a tinkerer to get information about this Sanor and where to find him. Will the heroes finally track down this mad tinkerer? And what will happen if they encounter the Grey Ascent? The adventure begins. You guys head across town and go to the North Market. It is still uh, morning time when you're there. The stalls are open, even though the rain is uh, coming down strong. There's some fresh food that you guys eat, which is great compared to the traveling rations you've been having out on the road. Uh, you get even some uh, apple cider that's warm, which is great out in the rain. And you pass by some shops of all sorts of different kinds and you ask around and after about an hour of walking around the city, in particular around the market, you are pointed towards a side street and there is a shop that sells nothing but very cool looking rugs. And then next door to it is a shop that has tons of cool little clockwork gadgets that are in the window. Half of them are moving in different shapes, maybe like a small bird that flutters a little bit, um, a little um, mechanical boy looking thing that's like strumming some guitar and half of them don't work, but it looks really cool. A lot of them are made of a coppery type material and you go inside. Yeah. The doorbell jingles and you see there is a lady who is hunched over an elven uh, woman hunched over a large table on the far side of the shop the shop's really small again with lots of expensive looking ornate gadgets and she's got something she's working on that's held up by lots of tools and supports and vices and she's got this big magnifying glass so she can see things she's got small little jeweler's tools in her hands and some cool little jeweler's glass over one eye she takes it out and comes over and says, yes, hello, welcome to my shop. Hi, are you, um, my name is Puck, are you leaving? I am Master Puck. Uh, we saw, uh, I, well, I saw... Uh, well, if she's leaving, let her go, unless we need to find the owner. <laughs> I saw your piece at the library, the piece you did for the uh, the exhibit last year. Oh, uh, yes. It was very great, the one with the... The the, uh, the motion of the world. Yeah, that's the name of it. That's great. Yes. That's great. How'd you get started in uh, this, this so kind of an uh, interesting, odd business? It was something I started as a young girl. It was more of a magical nature, but... I didn't take to the magical arts as well as I thought, but the artistry I think I've taken to quite well. Look at this one. Three dolphins moving as though they are at the bow of a ship. That's pretty great. Are you a collector yourself, Master Puck? A little bit. I was wondering if you did, like, commission pieces. Of course. Yeah? I would like to get, I would like to, uh, we'll talk, like we could talk uh, about one of me and my friends here. We're adventurers. Oh. Is there, is, do you, could you, could you do like a, a piece with the four of us in it? I believe that could certainly be arranged. That'd be great. Something like that though would uh, come at a price. <coughs> and if you oh, want um, animation, that means movement, Master Puck. Oh, that's great. I that would cost an additional fee beyond that. Oh well, well, um, what what kind of fee? What what? What kind? What, how much would this cost us? It depends upon your budget. If you would like a simple caricatures that re represent the four of you. No, I like it. Detail. Can it, can it, can it what? <laughs> <laughs> that means rough hewn shapes. No, draw draw like some rough hewn shapes. Well, you guys. Sorry. Oh, this is nice. 
Well, uh, yeah, Peru, Peru, don't break it. Smash train drop. Bull in a chat. <laughs> How? Uh, no, I'd like it a little more detailed. Of course. Um, I can do detail where you would, a friend would easily be able to say that that is you, Master Puck, and each of your friends. Oh. And that would start at 175. Oh. And if we want to have that be uh, animated, we could have um, different kinds of actions. What actions would you like them to do? Some Something of camaraderie, rays of uh, tankards of ale? Yeah, that's good. With us drinking and, and uh, cheersing and uh, being, being a little rambo. Would you like them facing each other or in a row? Back to back. Could we do it like facing each other, like one on each corner? Do you have any that chop and slice and stab and poke? He's violent sometimes. But we do a lot of that. We are adventurers. We run into some fights sometimes. Well, that would bring the price to uh, 345. I think just just us, like, uh, raising our glasses, like, you know. Not too many of these appear very useful. All decorative. It's all, it's art. It's art, Grim. Do you have anything that walks around, can protect? A bite? Ooh, how about something I can write? <laughs> she says, no, I'm afraid this is a, this is a shop of, of curiosities and art and imagination. I don't think this is the one. Neven, uh, uh hi, for uh, me. hello. Uh, uh, Avius Couture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fuck is deflated. <laughs> He knows it's going to be ruined. He's totally kicking our ass in, like, diplomacy and uh, charisma and just... He, 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 uh, he I, had her going down the yeah. path and would have been fine. I'm, I'm the Screwed one who up. discovered Katorum Island. I'm sure you've she heard. She doesn't know about stupid Katorum Island. <laughs> Hush, little boy. <laughs> Nobody knows about... The three of us don't even know about Katorum Island. <laughs> <laughs> and a storm cloud. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, I, well, and, and it's not here or there. Um, uh, are there other artists like you uh, in the Empire? There are a few. I, of course, am the best in oh, all the yes, city. Oh, yes, no no question. Of course, of course. Uh, we're just curious. We're just wanting to do some comparative analysis. This uh, is art, sir. Yes, yeah. You must speak with your heart. Uh, well, not my heart science. likes numbers and logic and knowledge. Uh, n- no art is too simple or too uh, abstract for me. So perhaps we could have a sitting. We can do it now, <laughs> or we can do it at a time that's convenient for you, and we can uh, get this going. I would need uh, half of the payment now. How much did you say it was going to be? It will be 175 for a pose that is uh, locked in place. And if you would like an end, some animation, I can animate both the arm to raise the tankards as well as some facial animation as well. And then that would bring it up to 345. Well, no, nah, that's that 345 is a little, <clears throat> little expensive. My, my pocketbook took a hit recently. <clears throat> um, he glances at Elma. Yeah. <laughs> Levin, do you know an, an artist named Sonor? I do. So, do you want it animated or not? Um, yeah. Well, uh, no, that's too expensive, but I do. I want to catch... Where is your budget, Master Puck? Could Let's Sonor find... do it for us? <laughs> she says, sir, I'm conducting some business right my here. Friend, if you can just wait friend, a moment. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, Levin. My friend is is kind of rude. He saw uh, that uh, the spider that was in the library, and he's very curious about that. It reminds him of of something we saw on one of our travels, and he wanted to um, see see where uh, the artist. Would, uh, I have a spider over here. It is a spider that crawls along a web. But it, can I see it? Of course. Yeah. And she shows you, and it's basically a large coppery web with a coppery small little spider with four yeah, legs moving around. He's he's very interested in uh, the the spider that we saw at the library and and where the artist like captured uh, or saw that spider. It's well, let's one. keep you focused. Do you want to look at no. spiders or do you want to no, focus no, no, more no, on no, you no, and no, your friends? I was trying to to. Ch- because I think that very, would capture the art and the essence of you. I was trying to excuse my my friend for being rude. I'm sorry. 
Um, I do want to, well, let's, um, we're kind of, I wasn't expecting you to drop everything and, and, uh, uh, make this right now. So let's maybe, can, maybe in a couple days we can come back. I can put something down, maybe not half down, but I get, I can give you 20 gold right now to kind of, uh, <clears throat> and I'll come back in a couple days and we can talk about. Of course, I can take an initial deposit of 20 and we'll begin when we have received half payment. Okay. Fair enough. And she gets out a quill and some paper and she, writes down your name. Do you need some gold? No. Yeah. She takes twenty gold from you. Yeah. And then, uh, do you do you, do you know how to write your name on the paper pot? Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. Uh, just like this. It's a bloody goblin paw print. Pretty mm-hmm. much. <laughs> <laughs> Cuts his own hand and just squirts blood on it. Uh, she says, "All right, I will keep this and." Um, we will continue business when you return in a few days. Can I ask uh, one more question? Of course. Um, this old man is going to pester me for for so long if I don't ask. But uh, he really wants to go meet this Sonor fella to ask him about the spider. Um, do you have any? Do you know where he where we could find him? I promise we're not like I gave you gold. Like I'm not trying to shop you around or anything. Uh, you're looking for Sonor. Mm-hmm. He does not have shops like this. He does not sell pieces like I do. He is, um... He's like wand- a wandering artist? He's just an odd fellow. I would not even call him an artist myself. Um, I know him more as a silversmith. He is part of that guild. I'd recommend speaking with them. Oh. The, um, he is frequents uh, Old Town, so I think you should most likely find him connected to the Silversmith Annex in Old Town versus the main Silversmith Guild and uh, at the other side of the city. Okay, thank you so much. I'll be back. I'll see you in a couple days. Excellent. Uh, start, start. Maybe I can get some. And don't gold. touch that. She takes something from Olgrim. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> may, maybe if, uh, if my ship comes in, we can do an animated one. I hope that's what I'm hoping for. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, Levin. Leaving. And we are leaving, yes. All right, what's your plan of attack? Old Market. The Silver Guild in the Old Market. Okay, <coughs> Silver, you guys have been the there annex. before. The Annex, yeah. You guys have been there before, yeah. you know just where it's at. Is this where we frightened that one lady? Yes. Shit. <laughs> I don't remember that. You wouldn't. <laughs> I think you were the cause, yeah, too. Yeah, you were. You approach. This is a really nice, high-quality looking warehouse, essentially. It's got some loading areas where wagons can come in and drop off materials. And then it's got this side office that is attached to the building oh, I do with a small door. <laughs> As you walk up. Oh. <laughs> it's about uh, noon o'clock. What do you want to do? Does anybody have any contacts here? Nope. Let's just go baffle him with our bullshit again. Well, I, I believe do have some silver statues. Oh, this is true. I think the last time we came asking about Sonora, they weren't too kind to us. We weren't asking about Sonora last time. Oh. We were asking about a clock. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The, the Malil's clock, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Of course. <laughs> Three hours later. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you take the take take the lead, elf. All right, all four of you going in. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, yep. Certainly going in. Right. Where the motley crew go so well. <laughs> all right, the four of you are inside. There is I don't a. Know what to say to these people. You have your gold statue or silver. That has statue. nothing to do with. Oh yeah, I mean, I'll take the. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, Go yeah, in. Puck, puck, I'll, I'll help him the statue. Good cop, bad cop again, yes. No. I'll, help. <laughs> I'll help carry statues. Wizard, please. <laughs> let me let me not burden you. I will carry all statues. Okay. Okay, I go in and like what's, and what's in there. You go inside, there is just office related stuff. So like whatever the equivalent of filing I guess a shelf with a bunch of books and scrolls. There's a desk there. There's a not there was a woman there you saw before, she's not there, there's a guy there. Good. And uh he says he looks up. Uh, yes, hello. Hi, sir. My name is, my name's Puck. What's your name? Adig. Adig. Very nice to meet you. Um. Are you not delivering? No, 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 no. Um, I'm, I'm here looking for someone, actually. I was, uh, I was at the library, or my friends and I were at the library earlier, 
and uh we saw have you ever have you been to the library they have a bunch of this clockwork like uh they had an exhibit a year ago and there's some some cool little gadget thing oh well, sounds interesting and uh we saw uh the name of an artist on one of them and uh we want to ask him about about his piece um it was the back door opens and a big laborer pokes his head in and the guy at the uh desk says no no we're fine and the door closes um yeah his name was uh sonor and uh i asked him one of the other artists and uh uh leaving she said that uh he he works uh a lot with uh with your your guild here oh all right and how can i help you oh i'm looking for i'm looking for him oh sonor do you know do you know him i know sonor yes oh um could is there somewhere i could go to find him can you can be Give me a way to contact him? Oh, I cannot give you information like that about guild members, um, but here. I just want to, I mean, I'm not, I just want to, uh... He hands you a piece of paper and a quill and ink. Do you know how to write? Yeah, oh yeah. You can leave a message and I will get it when he next drop by. He comes by once a month and I'll make sure well, he gets it. Once a month is, like, uh, was he just here? Like, are you expecting him soon? Uh, I can't remember. I haven't seen him in two months. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that doesn't work out with the math there, does it? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not here all the time. Uh, my, my name's Avius Katorum. Um, <laughs> keeps waiting for the recognition. <laughs> One Someday. day. One, One day. day. Someday. <laughs> uh, can you? Could you possibly ask your, um, your fine office staff here if anyone has seen Sonor uh, recently? Make a persuasion roll with advantage. Oh, yep. Need advantage. 18, 20. 20. He says, uh, yeah, hold on. He opens the door, but stays there to keep an eye on you guys. Um, and says, uh, hey, has anyone seen, uh, the uh <clears throat> the silversmith uh sonor kind of a chubby fellow and then he closes the door and says uh yeah someone saw him a couple weeks ago don't have an exact date for you oh uh oh a couple what did they uh was he coming or going or picking up dropping off or? i'm afraid i can't give that information well i don't understand you're not a guild member. Oh, oh, but, um, press the digitation. And I show him my guild pendant. It's not, it's not that Damn detailed. It. No, sorry. It's not psychic, psychic paper. paper. You yeah. keep wanting to be psychic I paper. I do not want it to be psychic paper. I mean, I'm sure I've seen a, pe- a guild sign pendant thing somewhere. Um, He's probably wearing one. Yeah, he's, there's a symbol that they have displayed prominently. You want to show him something yeah. like that? Um, what is prestidigitation? Read me the part that, that works with. Just want to make sure the spell works. Um, I create a non-magical treatment or an illusory image that can fit in my hand and lasts until the end of my next turn. Okay. Make a deception roll. Mm-hmm. 20. A total of 20? Ma- a natural. natural 20. A natural 20?! Holy cow, you just created psychic paper. (laughs) (laughs) For one turn. (laughs) You create uh, an amazingly accurate symbol that totally fits what a silversmith guild should have that matches the symbol he has, but also it looks worn enough that you've had it for a long time. You've been a longstanding member, and you also saw some different... um, like uh, military grade type emblems and stuff like that. So you give yourself a decent ranking within the guild as well. And he says, oh, well, why didn't you say so? I don't like to um, to flaunt my, my rank. Is. I don't throw rank around. Can I put these down now? <laughs> He's holding up high <laughs> two silver statues in the air. His arms quivering. <laughs> I... <laughs> It's, it's, I like to stay humble about it. He, uh, goes over to the bookcase and takes out a big book and goes through it and says, let's see here. He pulled off a natural 20. Yeah, I know. Wow. Crazy. 
he looks through here and says, uh, yes, um, I've got a entry here for Sonor. Let's see, where's it at? Uh, guild member Sonor, guild number 7070, delivery two months ago. Silver content, none. I think that's pretty usual for him. Other content, um, several dozen iron cogs of different diameters. Uh, destination, uh, here we go, uh, the clock tower in Old Town. So he had uh, uh, parts delivered to the clock tower? No, they're delivered here, and he And they were for the them. clock tower. Uh, for him. For him. I think he's got a workshop there or a, or some sort of uh, assignment. Oh, I see. He picked them up from here to take them to the clock tower. Indeed. Ah, well, uh, I appreciate your help. It's uh, We're very much looking forward to uh, talking with him about his art. And so, just so you know, we have uh, doubled our security for members of your ranking. So if you have deliveries that need to be made here or elsewhere... We can provide that with extra security. Excellent. Thank you for that information. Of course. I, it's been a while, so I, I was not aware. Um, and Master Avius, did, did you have a question about the who commissioned a uh, clock to be made for... Um... Yes, yes. Thank you, Elma. Um, um, uh, there was uh, a friend Master? of mine... A friend of mine had a, a, a <laughs> clock Master delivered Master. to him from the guild here. <laughs> Um, a very fine clock, uh, clockworks, uh, piece, uh, uh Master Mungil, uh, could, uh, we were trying to, it's, it's unfortunately, uh, embarrassingly, uh, for the maker, whom, whomever it is, it, it broke, and so we need to let him know, uh, that, um, it, 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 if it can be repaired, uh, Please, post haste. Um, let me see here. And he spends some time. If you've got time, he's going to take 10, 15 minutes to go through a bunch of books. Sure. All right. You sit down and he's, I'm so sorry. So let me check the next log. And Olgrim just gives up, just puts the stuff down. <laughs> and he says, uh, yes, I do see a delivery to a, a Malil, a nobleman uh, in yes, Old yes. Town. Yes, yes. Um, all I see is it was a, a large clock and, uh, the delivery date, and it also has, uh, Sonor's name. Oh, very good. Okay. Uh, excellent. Well, then we have much to, to speak to him with about, um, thank you so much. Uh, what was your name again? I can't remember. <laughs> Attic. Attic. Attic, thank you. Uh, yes, I will, um, when the time comes for a promotion, uh, do not hesitate to put me down as a reference. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I'm up tomorrow, actually. Where, where are you? <laughs> it's not Shit. too inconvenient. We can call a meeting now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys leave. Ooh, old Town, Clock Tower. I think that's where the... Is that where the... Cabin? I don't know. I, I kind of think oh, it is. Let's head that way. Let's go check it out. Okay. You guys head that way. Um, you're about to ask Avius some locals. You're already in Old Town. You're just about to ask some people where you the clock tower clock is. Tower? But you can see a giant clock tower. You've walked past it it's many, many times. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Elmon. <laughs> Anytime. Glad I could help. It's huge, made of stone and wood. It's towering tall. It's got this gigantic, like, 15, 20-foot uh, clock at the top. Um raining like crazy and you guys are there <clears throat> well if it that's <laughs> Malil about Sonora we yeah, yeah and yeah, he yeah, doesn't yeah. know who Sonora right. is does he no okay <laughs> all right some big giant wooden uh sorry metal double doors um are the uh, main entrance here there's an actual <laughs> physical entrance into the clock tower yep oh it's like wow. Big Ben. Is it open? Like are the doors thing. open? Uh, the doors are closed. But I mean, like, uh, uh, Puck wants to go and see if they're locked. All right, you push and push. You're not sure if it's a lock or strength, but they do not move. Gr- Mr. Grimm. Hey. I, might need, I might need a little elbow grease here. Okay. You throw your elbow into it, Olgrim, and it is locked tight. Mr. Elf, can you open this? Maybe. Ogrim starts to walk around the tower to see if there's another way okay. in. 
I guess I will try to pick the lock. You start looking around, and Elmon, you are trying to find a lock currently. Uh, Puck, you, as you stand back and watch Olgrim walk around the building, you get a sense of unease at this building. You have a (laughs) concept of nature, of balance, life, growth, death, animals. Here you have a sense of um, chaotic energy, a a focused sense of chaotic energy um, that is present in this structure. Looking forward to fighting some of my favorite, greater favorite enemies. So there's something quite unnatural and disturbing to your natural senses about this structure. Uh, Elmon, you're having trouble finding any lock whatsoever. Olgrim, you have found a back door that is also, that's third the size, made of metal, um, that's also here. Avius wants to nonchalantly detect magic. With a spell? With his, with his staff that he collected and put oh. back in his backpack. All right, you, and you're tracking your charges? Yep. All right. So that's number two. You use the command word, which was what again? detect magic. All right, you say that out loud while holding your staff, and this time it goes bing and turns a light blue color. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Look on the staff, it reads Acme. <laughs> Olgrim, what are you up to? Checking this uh, possible entryway to see if it uh, will budge. Or All right, anything. it does not budge. <clears throat> there is no door handle. There's no way to even seem to open it, but you do see about eight feet away from it and uh, kind of lowish on the ground, a, let's see, a two by four foot metal panel that's bolted into the wall that might let you in. I do examine it and do see if I can, uh, in fact, remove said bolts to the panel. All right, make make an investigation roll. A nine. A nine. You are able to pry open a section. It makes a little bit of noise, and you see you got one corner slightly pried off. You can see underneath it is not any entrance, but there is some complex machinery behind it. Well, that looks dangerous. Um, <clears throat> I leave this alone for the moment. Go back to the front and okay. report to the group what right. I have found. And uh, the way I go back is to complete the round in case there's... There was nothing else. Okay. <laughs> and I found a panel. I might have damaged it a little bit, but... There's all kinds of bitey gears in there I'm not keen to go into. You got bit? Oh, no, the, the gears, they bite, they... They bit you? They have teeth, right? <laughs> they bit you with their teeth? They, they bit, they... Are you okay? I'm fine. Your finger looks a little swollen. <laughs> <laughs> the ring's on too tight. <laughs> where's the, where's this panel? Let's go, let's go, uh, mess around with it. It's got, it's got bolts, it's, it's bitey. There's okay. No, there's no other way in. I, let's uh, see, at least investigate it. That's just silly. Come on, you knock, uh, you barely make any noise. It, this door is crazy thick. Oh, wait. Uh, what do you suppose? Um, anyway, it's over here. If we were to yeah. throw a anyway. wrench in the cogwork, so to speak. That, well, let's see what we're working with. That uh, like, they would need Sonora to find come a back. Re- go and, find a I'm, wrench. Um, <laughs> <laughs> If the clock uh, were to be uh, um, disabled, uh, Sonor the perhaps clock's way up there. But the, how are you going to get up there? What? Let's go look at this panel Grim found. And, or it's go, right go, here. Or go find a wrench to throw it into the machinery. I have the staff of detect magic. <laughs> it's one perfect use. <laughs> I know exactly what this staff is for. Um, you guys are at the back side. Olgrim has pointed to this panel. Let's pr- let's pry the panel off. You were able to get it off. Um, well, yeah, you're able to get it off. You make a little bit of noise, but get it off. It's not bolted in. It's kind of wedged in in some cool way that it can 
slide off once you figure it out. Oh, it slides. <laughs> <laughs> There's this big 90 degree bent on a corner. <laughs> His hands all cut up. Uh, be inside, there are two circular cogs that are uh, movable, and there's weird pieces that are clicking along, rods that will jut out and connect with the cogs and, and, and move back in. And the whole thing has this motion to it. It's very uh, complicated, and if you want, you can try and spend some time uh, to figure it out. One of you can. I want to. While they're doing that, I'm uh, going Olgrim to... is folding the uh, panel in half. Okay. Like, cleanly in half. While they're doing that, I'm going to sit down on the ground. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Insight? And I'm going to uh, use my primeval awareness. Okay. And I'm going to attune my senses to determine if any of my favorite enemies lurk nearby. Uh, I spend one uninterrupted minute in concentration. Uh, I can sense whether any of my favorite enemies are present within five miles of you. Uh, Five miles? Mm -hmm. Uh, This feature reveals which of your favorite enemies are present, their numbers, and the creature's general direction and distance from you. Okay. If there are multiple groups uh, of your favorite enemies within range, you learn this information for each group. Is that a level three spell? It is just a, it's a uh, ranger ability that starts at third, third level. Nice. All right. That's a ability. Mm-hmm. All right. You see Elmon uh, kneel or, or sit down, cross his legs, start focusing, touching the ground, whispering Crawling something. around yeah. like, like a, a Aragorn. What are you ass. doing? You interrupted me. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> start over now. And you see his brows, as he has his eyes closed, his brows get more and more furrowed and more and more unsettled. <laughs> um, someone was looking at the this device. I was. I rolled a three. Uh, hold on. Don't roll. I'll tell you what you need to roll. You can re-roll. Okay. Yeah. You are going to do... Uh, yeah, go ahead and make an inside roll. Go ahead. Actually, scratch that. <laughs> Sorry. Make a raw intelligence roll. Oh, raw. Seven. Seven. Uh, let me go back to it. Um, there it is. Without my, without my modifier, right? By is that what you, what you meant by raw? Uh, adding your intel, in, intellect. Oh, and Thirteen. In, Thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you start trying to get this cog into position, trying to figure out what's doing as things move around. Uh, you fail, and you take three points of bludgeoning damage as your hand gets caught as you're moving it. However, you I told think, you, lady. You think if you can figure it out, you might be able to unlock this door with very whispery, quiet movement. Uh-huh. Okay. This is totally connected to the door. But However, it's... you are also keenly aware that Olgrim has now folded this panel and is about to jam the whole thing into the clockworks. Um, don't do, don't oh. do that, buddy. <laughs> Olgrim, I may have been too hasty in my suggestion to uh, uh, disable these clockworks. I think I may be able to figure them out. And thus open the door to the tower. Oh, chop, 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 wizard. Elmon, as you sit there in your mind, you're able to sense out to five miles. Your vision actually starts out at five miles and starts to come in quickly. And you detect something way out in the some farm field that you remember. And you're like, what is going on out there? It closes in and you start to sense really unsettling things. Um, maybe a mile away down the town, um, you detect a couple, uh, dangerous shield guardians that you're not sure why they would be there. Um, but that's not the most disturbing. You, de- you detect multiple, uh, it's almost like you're being spammed and overloaded. Multiple mm-hmm. dangerous constructs of many different types and many different sizes that are several miles beneath the city. Um, which is a little alarming, mm-hmm. and your your vision of these things start getting closer and closer, and you're picking up a, a few again throughout the city. Um, going back to Avius? Mm-hmm. I'm going to roll again? Okay, yeah. You dig your fingers in. You're starting to move it. Another sharp little thing's coming around. Intelligence. I'm going to use my... Oh, I got 21, uh, 27 this time. All right, 21. You figure out exactly where you need to... 27 figure exactly where it needs to be. You move the second gear in time in just the right moment, but you have to hold those at the exact right second and yell at Puck 
to grab this little rod that comes out. Puck, grab this little rod that comes out. Puck, make a dexterity roll <laughs> or sleight of hand. Mm, it's the one I made me grab a few weeks ago. <laughs> That's not the one. Natural 20. Whoa! That I would have said the so big rod nice. that comes out in that case. <laughs> Boom, you're able to grab this rod. You're able to lock it into place. Avis is able to let go carefully off of both cogs, and they stay in position, and then everything stops moving behind it. And then there's a ka-chunk from the door, and the whole thing very quietly slides into the wall out of place, letting you get into this back of this clock tower. Just as Elmon... Uh, opens his eyes. You have finished your sense. Uh, you have detected dozens and dozens of constructs within this structure. How many? 14,605. <laughs> Bunches. <clears throat> uh, that was an Avengers reference, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this tower is filled with, with constructs. This tower here? Uh, yeah. Dozens. This is, I told you guys I had a bad feeling about this place. It's in the oh. middle of town. Think of all the people. We've got we've got to investigate it. We've got to find this Sonore fella. And I just folded this panel in half. I'm wedging it someplace. <laughs> <laughs> Avius, turn around. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> let's let's. Let's see what's in here. All right, who's going first? Oh, me. <laughs> Ogrim's going I'll in right behind him. with a shield in one hand and a wedge piece of metal oh, in the other hand. Metal. Oh. <sighs> Don't worry, I'll find a place to put you. Is there a, like, should we notify the city guard? Should we no. check in with the Church of Lothian? It's no time to be sensible. With <laughs> Jamon. <laughs> No, all right. I just, just push him in behind. All right, you're being pushed in. in. The tower, eh? All right. You enter the base of this <gasps> clock Way tower. Way to be forceful. <laughs> <laughs> we were level two when we faced these guys last time. Think what we're gonna do at level six? Yeah, we're gonna be okay. brutalized. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is an old, musty chamber that is the entire size of the clock tower base. So it's big and wide. It's also vaulted. It's about thirty foot uh, tall ceilings. Um, there's a uh, light that uh, comes in, the muted light from the clouds uh, that spills through window slits above. What's the tower made of? Uh, mostly wood and, I'm sorry, mostly stone with some wood. Okay. And um, no steel? No. Okay. Uh, the uh, floor itself is bare wood with a uh, doorway on a side wall. In the center of the room is an elevator shaft that is made of metal grills. So just like X-type grills that make up an elevator shaft so you, that you can see through. Uh, resting at the bottom of the shaft is a very simple lift-type elevator. Uh, near your doorway that you're next to is a mechanism of uh, like a metal half barrel on the ground with two levers that are sticking out of it. And as you uh, walk near and pass this mechanism, you see the silhouette of two men standing in the center of the room near the elevator. And they kind of rise up. Hello? They walk towards you with uh, armored booted um, steps. Quietly. Um... Are they constructs or men? Uh, you are, you can identify them in their silhouette as constructs. Oh, okay. shh. <laughs> they are about five feet tall. They have some uh, some sort of hat type thing, uh, some sort of weapon that they're not holding threateningly, but they're just coming towards you in they're unison. constructs. <laughs> Let's get after them. One of them says, identify yourself. Puck. I'm Puck. I'm here to find, uh, I'm here to talk to Sonor about smart work. Unknown. Identify yourself. They continue to close in. Sonor. Unknown. Identify yourself. Arrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jamon. You can see in the moonlight that they cast that these are absolutely automated uh, constructs. They are um, steel, metal, and iron uh, that have halberds and almost like oh. a top hat type shape to them and almost like a nutcrackery but less friendly 
nutcrackery with um, uh, uh, rigid type legs and uh, an arrow goes whipping by. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, 16. No, I'm sorry. Nine plus nine is 18. 18? Math is hard. Um, uh, this is literally all the math we deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only got to count to twenty. <laughs> I know. Shush. Uh, that is a hit. Okay. Um. Let's see. So, and they are constructs, which means plus four damage. <clears throat> so eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen points of damage. Sixteen points of damage. And your second shot to the same guy. Uh. Yep. Fifteen. Okay is a hit. And I think I get the plus four for every attack. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so 14. 22. Yeah, a hit and then a, just a brutal destruction of one of them as its head just gets uh, severed clean. You hit it right in a connecting joint and it blops off, and there's even a little s- couple sparks coming from its neck. <laughs> little and springs then springs fly. Yeah. It drops down to its knees and then just stays there rigidly in its knees, holding its halberd with no head and completely immobile. However, the other one is closing in. And, however, Olgrim, you're first before it gets to the group. Oh, yes. Uh, it, it's and it's got this halberd and is coming to attack you right now, Olgrim. It will, oh. it will slice at you as soon as you're done. All right. I will uh, engage it and slice. Identify yourself. Identify yourself. <laughs> uh, a non-natural 20 All right. with nine points of damage. You slice and there's some sparks as you hit it for nine. For nine. Got it. <clears throat> uh, I hit uh, 24 uh, for eight points of damage. Eight. You hack off its left arm, and it's still trying to swing with its good arm with its weapon at you. Uh, and sends its halberd and its right arm flying off. <laughs> it is now armless, and it is now still trying to close in on you, Olgrim, with no arms. Ooh, brutal miss. Uh, uh Avius. <laughs> no fireballs, please. <laughs> Identify yourself, and it's trying to it's, it's walk what? into and headbutt uh, Olgro. Identify this! And 15, 20 firebolt for 13 damage. Uh, what was the attack? 20. 20 is a hit for 13 damage. Boom! Olgrim, you uh, shield yourself as flame erupts around this thing, and there's a big hole of smoldering fire, and it uh, collapses in a heap at your feet. Right, we made enough noise in here. Are we taking this lift up? And I'm kicking through and sort of sifting through the uh, Maybe debris. It's a torch. You said moonlight. Yep. No, not moonlight. Uh, uh, um, cloud lies. What oh, I meant oh, to say. Okay. 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 Uh, does the li- from where we're at? Does uh the lift go down and up? Or are we at the bottom? You go over to it, um, looking at the controls, you um, believe this is at the bottom and it goes up from here. However, that does not appear to be functional and there is yet another bizarre, complicated gear device to um, make this elevator move. Stairs? Uh, there, there's a doorway. Yes. Ogrim tries to uh, take off the hat and fit it to his head. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do. It almost is oversized and comes down a little low over your eyes. Does that now make him a construct? <laughs> you get bonus. All right, you Identify are now. Identify yourself. <laughs> you waddle. They won't notice. <laughs> I can sneak in. What would you like to do? There's a door right there. Let's go. Through. That's the door out. No, it's the side no. door. Let's that's, go. Let's go the through the door. door. Okay, you guys head to the door and start walking up some stairs you find, and it heads up um, uh, back and forth. These stairs wind, he- heading up to the tower. How many how many stories are we going up? Um, you're going up. the The clock tower's pretty tall. It's like uh, eighty feet tall. Oh, okay, pretty tall. 
Um, all right, you go up and you come to a uh, the end of the stairs and they dump you out into a uh, workshop of some sort. And inside you see half a dozen, so six or seven of these uh, clockwork guys that are all just hanging there. It's a low ceiling room um, and most of them appear to be in disrepair. Uh, and then uh, there is uh, two more doors out of this room as well. Is there anything else of note? Uh, make an investigation roll. Can we all? Puck can. Uh, Is there anything else of note? Six. Six. Puck, you find nothing. Elmon, you do find something. Uh, the fifth clockwork uh, watchman guy that you come across um, who seems to be in worse shape of all the other. He needs more repairs than the others. <clears throat> He speaks to you. He's hanging there, hung by two little hooks, and he says, please speak your identity three times. Elmon, Elmon, Elmon. Identity accepted, awaiting command. (laughs) I think you've made a friend. Unknown identity, identity, say four of the others as they unhook themselves and start closing in on Oh, of course. Let's click on the dwarf. You've got four clockworks that are closing in on you, Elmon, and you've got one that's awaiting your command. Attack the other constructs. Okay. (laughs) He turns around and reaches past you and grabs a metal, thick metal rod to use as a weapon. Avoid... Uh, biological creatures. He steps gingerly around Puck <laughs> and starts wailing away at the other four uh, clock clockworks. Um, would you guys like to assist? Oh, he lets him? himself yeah. down from the whole yep. thing. Oh, okay. Puck's gonna join him. Join. Join in. Yep. All right. One, two, three, four. Done. Here, go. Let's do a quick little combat action. And kill that, and kill that. Got it. Uh, Elmon, you're first. Yay. Um, You've got these guys that are closing in. They're not quite in the distract you from shooting range, but they're close. Uh, They are picked up uh, melee weapons, random bits from the repair section. Uh, Can I, am I, how big is this room? This room is low ceilinged, not enough to influence your weapon though, Olgrim, you're fine. Okay. Um, uh, it's the, it's a pretty nice size room. It's okay. maybe 80 by 20. It's weirdly shaped. I will step back, like, further away, so I'm, like, behind, like, Olgrim specifically, so I, so they are not in, <laughs> so they can't easily enter melee range. Olgrim is not able to help you. However, your new friend can be your protection. Right, but, I, I mean, I mean, I'm still stepping back, just so as they're moving in, they're less likely to get into melee range with me. There's not a lot of room behind you. Okay. You are able to step behind. Get this, your friend, Automaton, between you and him, and you are now on a workshop bench that's Very behind good. him. So getting some height and uh, pull an arrow back and um, shoot at uh, a construct. Go for it. Fire away. You got two shots. All right. First shot is going to be a non-natural 20. Okay. And This that. is your bonus enemy, guys, right? Yep. So I get plus four damage uh, to them. And which is going to give me uh, 15. Huge 15, shot. okay. And second arrow goes into the same one <clears throat> with a 19. Another hit. Now that it's Shoot. wounded, it will take uh, 11 plus 8. So 19 more points. 19 more. More brutal damage. Elmon knows exactly where to strike these things. Eight constructs. And you drop that one. Avius, you're next. I'm not a fan either. (laughs) You have essentially three clockworks with their backs to you that are just focused on Elmon. Their backs to me? Yeah. Elmon and Puck kind of started searching the room. Elmon unfortunately got away from the group, and now these three are closing in on him. Him and his friend. Gotcha. Um, I'll just do Firebolt. Firebolt! Fire away! Um, 13 to hit. 13 to hit, I don't think is good enough. Let me double check. 13 to hit is a miss. 
Uh, any movement or bonus actions? Or are you good? I'll I'll move away from them. All right. Uh, one brutal blow and a tear, and your autom- automaton friend Elmon has his leg removed. Unfortunately, oh. Pock, you're up. I want to. Um, <laughs> I regret go nothing. Go to the <laughs> one and uh, stick like just stab away with uh, with uh, my spear. Go for it. Uh, what was 16? Is a hit. Um. Uh, five, five damage. Five damage. You are able to scrape some chunks of metal off of them. Can and get it's a proficiency bonus on that? Not healthy. Not happy. Mm. It would be strength a bonus. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. He's not that strong. Oh, well. um, all right. Sorry. One of them steps past the your guard and strikes at you, Elmon. <laughs> And is just going to miss. It tries to uh, swipe at you. You just jump over it since you're on top of this workbench. And Olgrim, you're bringing up the rear. I'm supposed to be faster. <laughs> just going to take alert again. <laughs> what are you doing, Olgrim? I'm attacking one of the closest ones. Uh, okay, go for it. And go ahead and grab advantage on this one. Or being behind them? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> 23. That's a hit. Eight, uh, sorry, um, 10 points of damage. Nice big hit. Okay. Second attack. Same advantage. Yes. Is <laughs> is going to miss. Uh, that is uh, 11. That is a miss. You get a good first hit, though. You've uh, damaged that one uh, pretty well. It's the top of the round. Elmon, you're up. you got one guy in your face. So it'll be a disadvantage firing at anyone. Um, <clears throat> and there's bits of tools and gears being thrown around. There's there's all sorts of yeah, chaos. Yeah. Okay. So I will um, gingerly drop my bow and draw my sword and buckler. Can okay. That is a bonus. Action? That'll do your bonus. Okay. And I will engage in melee combat. Do it. Uh, twenty-two Jeez. to hit. There's a hit. Which one are you attacking? Uh, the one that's in my face. Okay. And it's unwounded, I assume. At this, this one point. is unwounded. Okay. Um, it will take 10 points of damage nice. on the first attack. Okay. And second attack is uh, 15 to hit. Okay, that's a hit. Yep, 15 to hit. <clears throat> and that will take 15 points Jeez. of damage. You swipe and hit. It tries clawing at you with this Terminator exoskeleton claw. You grab some weird giant cog piece from the wall and use it as a shield and bat it away. Then you bury this cog into its neck and kill it. And it goes down with a a, fl- a flaming sparks that shoot out of the side. Fantastic. It is dead. Uh, and Avius, you're up. I hate const- Firebolt again. <laughs> Firebolt. There's two left. I have two remaining, yes. They are both wounded. I miss. Okay, another miss. Having some challenges, I got this, Avis. guys. Don't worry. <laughs> they are attacking. One is turning around and attacking Olgrim. Oh, hello. Oh, uh, geez. That's not probably going to be good enough. Let me double check. 14, I assume, is not good for you. Will not be good enough. Uh, the other one's turning around and attacking the spear that just hit it, Goblin. <laughs> with a critical hit. Uh-oh. Puck, you have been struck. Its big claw rakes across you. Not too bad. Uh, nine points of um, piercing damage. Slashing damage. I'm sorry. Nine points of slashing damage. Done. And next up is Puck, who just got hurt. Yeah, I'm thrusting that spear into it again. Go for it. <laughs> Uh, 15. 15's a hit. Uh, four points of damage. Big four points of spear damage. Uh, you scrape him. Uh, Olgrim. <laughs> Another set of attacks. Go for it. to me. <laughs> a, a natural one. You miss and you will uh, throw Puck off of balance, uh, giving anyone attacking Puck next round advantage. Sorry. <laughs> Tripped up. What are, what are Krogs doing all over the floor? You have a second attack? Oh, I can take one? Yep. Duck! <laughs> <laughs> oh, not even better. 
Uh, 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 11. 11 a mess. Lots of problems there. Elmond, you're up. Yay. Um, <laughs> so do I have anything in melee range again? Uh, no. Okay. Can I pick my bow back up? Uh, you can, but you would have to drop your sword and shield to the ground as a bonus action. But I can do all that as a bonus action. Yes. <laughs> Just saying, if you have to flee, you'll be leaving weapons behind. Or you can take a full action and sheath and all that stuff. Um, how far away from Puck am I? Uh, you're maybe eight feet. <clears throat> and I'm standing up on top of this table? Yep. I'm gonna flying leap, uh, sword and shield come smashing down on top of one of the constructs. So you're leaping over it and striking at it. I mean, I'm basically just leaping off Charging of Charging at it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to leap over the construct. I'm just like, you know, taking like two steps, leaping off the table. All right. Coming down at, you know, into an attack on the construct, like right beside or, you know, like. Roll like, with advantage. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So Flying elf. Uh, and I think they're both wounded, aren't they? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Flying elf, crouching um, construct. <clears throat> so attack would be 24 to hit. Okay. Brunch. And damage is going to be uh, 19. Okay, you destroy that one, and as you're flying past him, you may make a second attack at the other one. Uh, With advantage, by the way. Well, 18 to hit. So let me just see if that's a 20. No, nope. okay. so 18 to hit. And then that one's going to take 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage, and it is also destroyed. And Elmon lands upon the ground in a superhero pose. I should have been a ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and crumbling chunks I can't of take a hit like you though. <laughs> of uh, machinery fall around him. This is his one of his his greater enemy. He is designed to fight these. <laughs> nice. Uh, and there is a uh, wounded one remaining wounded construct that is standing up on one leg and uh, staying nearby you, uh, Elmon. Do we try to fix Annoyingly it? hopping. Hopping and yeah. staying close to protect I'm you. I'm going to go back and grab my bow. Okay. To start. Um, I want to take a look at the construct and see if I, if there's, if I can like a, reattach its leg or make it any more sturdy than it is. Uh, you can make a... Some, to the constructs? I do, 19. That's why I've been using... For it. criticals. Uh, make a tinkering roll, which will use intelligence since you don't have the skill, and gain advantage from your studying of the book with your tinkering roll. Nice. Uh, 15. 16. You are able to crudely and quickly atta- reattach its leg. If it gets hit again, it'll probably lose a leg, but the leg is fully functional for now. Who? Cool. Puck I bolts it in. T- he's done this before. Puck has Sonor on his little <laughs> lapel. <laughs> You're not aware of it. You've been set up. He is V'ger. <laughs> so there's, you said there's two doors out of yes. this? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, choose this one. <laughs> Start thudding my way towards one of the doors. Okay. The leftmost. Uh, there was nothing else up here. There was no... Any kind of repair tools you want and um, machinery and tools. Anything that would qualify as lock picking type tools that would... I um, already had a set. I don't. He does oh, not. No. Um, there is possibly, if you can scrape together different pieces, um, but you're not um, quite sure. Go ahead and make an investigation roll. If you're all high enough, you might be able to scrounge something together. Uh, investigation that's going to be an 18. You have gathered several different small tools that will work and f- totally functional as thieves tools. You now have thieves tools. Fantastic. <clears throat> different ways to jimmy things open, yeah. pry things open. So You've got it. Disadvantage to Yes. Nice. Olgram, you have found a door. This has stairs that go up. What are stairs? Open the <sighs> other door, see where it goes. Okay. Go check out the other door. All right. So this is a thick metal door. You open it up and you uh, hear a cacophony of identify yourself from okay, a dark Okay, we're room. taking the stairs. <laughs> Slam the door closed. The door's closed. Uh, and there's can no... jam that door? You can. Oh, yeah. Door's jammed. Okay. Okay, sounds, sounds quiet. I don't think they noticed me. 
You can hear some loud machinery noises now uh, from uh, up above. Um, like, think factory machine noises um, some distance above, but you can now start to hear it's loud. Stay close, Construct. Affirmative. <laughs> okay. And I start stomping my way up the stairs. All right, you make your way up the stairs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, at the top of these stairs, it's very uh, short distance the stairs go, just a quick floor up. And here you've arrived at a bedroom that has been crafted in this place. Um, there's try a bed. to find the location of the factory noise that I'm hearing. In the it bedroom. is above you. A way above, okay. Yes, um, but much closer now. Um, you think it's just a floor or two above you now. Okay. Um, the bedroom has a bed. It's got a workbench with tools and cogs on it. There, um, uh, a bunch of decorative stuff. Not too unlike what you saw at Levin's shops. There's a bunch of like beetles and birds that are hanging from wires that you got to push your way out as you go through. Can I investigate? See if I can determine if it looks like this is Sonora's personal bedroom. Oh, uh, yeah. Make an investigation roll. Oh, and before you do that, there's a man sitting in, the, yeah. in a chair in the darkness. Is he chubby? Uh, you can't see from here. It's poorly lit. And he uh, kind of cocks his head. Um, in the dark, but he hasn't moved and hasn't cast any spells. Do, in the, do we notice him? Yeah, you can see him. In the low light, can I see him fairly clearly? Uh, you can. You can see him clear, fairly clearly. He is missing his lower half of his body, and he is not in a chair. He is sticking out of a box. And he does not appear to be human. He appears to be a uh, mechanoid in shape. That's not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Are there uh, unlit torches in the room? Or? There is a lantern that is uh, partially lit that's turned down way, way low. Oh, there's also another door uh, that's open, a big heavy metal door, and then there is a ladder that goes up in the middle of the room to uh, through a hole in the ceiling. I'm... Uh, <clears throat> Holgrim recalling from a prior encounter, uh, checking the ceiling for anything that might be propped or lodged and ready to fall like on us. Spiders? Spidery type things. Okay. Um, no, there's just all these dangling little toys that are just totally in the way. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> uh, watching. Oh, go ahead. Oh, as Avis is going to grab the lantern and do some investigation around the room. Okay. Make an investigation roll. Hey, watch out for this thing in the corner. Natural 20. Oh. <laughs> just casually. <clears throat> You were able to find in the uh, uh, workbench here, you can see uh, different uh, order forms and such to the Silversmith Guild, and it has his signature on it. You believe this is absolutely Sonor's uh, bedroom. And you have also gotten some words to be spoken to you by the man in the box. Okay. The man says, welcome visitor, please state your request. Above you, you hear loud, pounding machinery. Uh, uh, hello, um, Avius Um, I request... That's not compute. <laughs> uh, the location of Sonor. Visitor protocol started. Select, select helper purpose. Select library room locations. Select Purchase Library Pass. Select Stupid Library Secrets. <laughs> oh, I believe this was meant for the library. That is not a valid selection. Select what makes Helper better? Purpose. Select Library Room Locations. Select Purchase Library Pass. Select Stupid Library Secrets. <laughs> I, re I look around the, the box man to see, Stupid if a, library to see if there's a way to turn it off. Uh, you uh, can find a way to turn it off, yes. And I do so. All right. Uh, and uh, Puck... The library secret. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you just hear him say, you have selected... And he's powered down by Avius. <laughs> well, we can play later, Puck. It may maybe he wasn't playing. <laughs> Maybe there was something important we could have found out. About A the clue. Really, guys? I, he doesn't say that, but he does start 
sifting through. Maybe some send stuff. me his uh, phone number. <laughs> Get some digits. I uh, I will leave. You, there's the switch. You have your fun. Fuck, you want to turn it on no. or no? Okay. I want no. to. This is kind of neat. You um, have turned it on. Turn it on. Okay. Stupid library secrets. Welcome, visitor. State your request. Stupid library secrets. Visitor protocol started. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Select <Now I> know. <laughs> helper purpose. Select library room location. Select purchase library pass. Select stupid library secrets. Stupid library secrets. You have selected stupid <laughs> library secrets. <I> have. <laughs> they won't ever share through this thing. Select inverted pyramid. Select the Malkuth. Select necropolis. Select the Vi. Necropolis. I, you have selected not, the no, necropolis. Go back. <laughs> the necropolis is the large cemetery in the northeast of tallest city. While it is a revered location to mourn and pay respect, under no circumstances should any citizen remain within the walls of the necropolis after dusk. Hmm. Gonna make me wait through a prompt again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off with you. And I turn him off. All right. Yeah, well. Is there anything else of uh, like a personal nature or anything that could tell us um, any more about Sonora than we know? Uh, make a perception roll. Eight. Eight. You um, don't see anything unusual that can draw a personal nature to Sonora. Other than the lace band around his briefs. That's, that's the only part. <laughs> uh, there is a, is there a passageway up? Mm. There ladder. is a ladder that goes up, uh, and then there's a door on the far side of the room. There's lots of noise up there. Mm-hmm. I'm very keen to see what that is. After you. Up the ladder I go. Which okay. One? The ladder. Which one? Just the ladder. The there's ladder. a ladder and then there's a door on the other side. Oh, of I thought room. the door had a ladder too. No. Okay. Sorry. Right. Your door ladder? <laughs> yeah. All right, Elmon, you go up. There's no, a no. small no, no, hatch. No, no, no. no. Oh, that was my first. I almost <laughs> made it through all oh, that shit without saying it. Olgrim, you go up the ladder. <laughs> there is a hatch. I was so proud of myself. You can have a, a DM inspiration die, Elmon. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. You which, don't get wait, it. Wait, oh. which one? Elmon gets it. <laughs> can I give mine? You may not. No, Elmon? no. <laughs> Olgram, you've reached a hatch above your head, and you can open it easily. I do so. All right. You open it and are greeted by a cacophony of metallic sounds of things moving and slamming big metal bits. Uh, and you uh, look up and can see there is a huge upper chamber that you that is right above you, and there's big machinery that's swinging left and right, and big grill things right above you, and it's crazy factory type concept. I uh, I try to give a quick look around to see if there's any other natural movement, and uh, outside of that, then I descend the ladder. Okay, uh, you see no natural movement of any kind, just lots of machinery and metal frameworks and things all around you, and you descend back down. Well, that'll make your head spin. What, uh, Let's what try the fight? door. What, what, what is up there? Well, I don't know what it is. It's just lots of machines. Why is there big machines in a clock tower? I don't know. I don't make clocks. Probably running the clock. I mean... I don't, I don't think anything that loud. This is goblin territory. I'll get, okay, I'll go check it out. <laughs> so I climb up, the puck climbs up there. All right, you open up the hatch, and again, the same cacophony of sound. I go, and like up, I go into the room. All right, you go into the room. There, uh, you can see on one of the walls is the back side of the clock with this giant, crazy monstrosity of a machine connected to it. And then there's other bits moving around and sliding around that don't seem like they should belong there to the clock at all. And there are uh, one of those uh, uh, clockwork watchmen that Elmon is so easily dispatched uh, is being moved around and dragged around. What would the rest of you like to do? I'm waiting for... What do you see up there? There's There's at least one more of those construct things. The hatch comes slamming down and a giant uh, literally almost from the the board game Mousetrap a giant square section of banded metal 
that's maybe 30 by 30 by 30 tall comes crashing down and slamming down around you, Puck. But it's not, it's not a total cube. The top is gone. So you've got essentially just four walls of metal bands that just come slamming down 30 by 30 by 30 with a huge crunch. It almost uh, it knocks you down with the vibration. Hatch isn't in that 30 by 30. The hatch is, but it got closed first. The okay. hatch closed and then shh, this thing drops around you. Get that you, hatch open. You hear a voice um, from above and in the distance amongst the machinery, and you see a couple different balconies around you. You're not sure where it's from. A voice say, You shouldn't be here. Why not? And a big claw comes down and lowers one of these clockwork watchmen in the uh, containment area. Another claw moves over and drops a brass-legged spider with weird needly-like uh, blades on both sides, and these things are closing in towards you. Uh, can I open the hatch? You grab on the hatch and start pulling. It does not give. Get that hatch open. I don't know why it closed. Get it open. Okay. What? And What's the hatch made send of? The Metal. What kind? Send the ladder and uh, uh, not iron. having no what contact color? with Puck, but I... Uh, iron color? Try to bash it. Not green? No. All right. Not green. Well... That's interesting. No, hey, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Olgrim. I didn't hear you. Uh, not having uh, eyesight direct with Puck here, I kind of very concerned now, and I give it, uh, give it my all to try and get that uh, hatch open. Okay. You uh, climb up the ladder and you start heat uh, throwing your uh, shoulder into that hatch to try and get it open. Um, While that's happening, Avius runs to the door, the other door. Okay. And opens it. You open that door. Inside is a um, medium-sized storeroom, maybe 25 by 25 feet, and in it are six of those spiders I just described, and they all move slightly and look at you, and then all six drop to the floor and start moving towards you. I run out of the room and shut the door. You shut the door? And I bar it shut. Make a strength roll as they start pushing and trying to wedge open this door with what strength they have. Elmon, help! I will help. Okay. What'd you roll, Avius? I rolled a five. <laughs> Elvon, wait, the... wait, wait. A four. A four. Oh, yeah. The yeah. door opens up and pushes slightly. There's some brass legs that appear. Elmon, you may also make a strength roll. 18. Okay. Elmon slams it <laughs> shut, and there's some weird bent spider leg that gets snapped off. Squee! Uh, so you are good there. Uh, Puck, you uh, have some bad guys that are closing in on you right mm-hmm. now. Um... Yes, I do. Uh, combat is about to happen here. And I'm going to roll initiative just for you. Good luck. <laughs> Any of your uh, beast modes? No, I'm not going to do that <laughs> beast yet. Mode. He's a transformer. <laughs> All right. The uh, clockwork weaving spider skitters right towards you and attacks. It is going to attack um, with its trimming blade. Just a trim. Just a trim. With a 24, it Mm. slashes at you uh, for 10 points of slashing damage. (laughs) And what kind of armor do you have? Leather. Not just normal leather, though, right? Yeah, I have poison resistance. All right. It would have started to disassemble a bit of that leather with its blade. Um... Uh, but the magic uh, keeps it reinforced and protects it. Jesus. Um, uh, you are up next. Uh, I'm going to disengage with my special ability. Okay. And uh, get as far away as I can. All right. The clockwork watchman is closing in, but you can. And then I'm going to cast flaming sphere. All right. What? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's learning the tricks. He's got some wizard tricks. Nice, nice. A nice. giant ball of fire a, a comes into creation. A good one. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm gonna uh, and I'll, and I'm gonna give you a chance to take that back. Okay. Because something happens, you hear no, no magic from up in the rafters. Do you want to take back your spell? <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Okay. I'm still going to cast it. Giant ball of flame appears. Where is it appearing? Uh, right on top of this spider. Okay. It is on the teeny tiny little spider. <laughs> oh. Lovely. And we've got you maybe backed against the wall here. Yep. We have a vicious looking spider miniature. All right. All right. It is there. And that was your action. Oh, action. Does it do any damage right off the bat or did it know if it they, starts its turn? Um, yeah. So. Or can't you do as a bonus action, move it? You can move it as a bonus action. Oh, then yeah, I'll move it, it. Uh, into the other guy. All right. So and then it makes a, what does it do? Uh, Makes a deck save. It's a deck save, yeah. All right. The uh, creature ends its turn. Within five Not minutes. when you move. No, when you move it into, what happens? I just can move it up to. Ram it feet. into the sphere into a creature. That creature much makes the saving throw. Oh, okay. Okay. Against the sphere's damage. Um, it's pretty dexterous. The spider, a sixteen, I think, is better than your DC. Your spell yes, DC. Yes. So then, half damage or no damage? Uh, it's half damage. Is that correct, Tim? Yes. Okay. Uh, of two damage. Two damage, fire damage. You have heard it. And the the creature does the creature stop be, or not because it failed? Mm, I don't think there's anything with stopping its movement. Mm-hmm. The the ball comes to a stop. The giant flaming sphere. So boom, you you run into it. A little bit of fire gets it. Uh, the clockwork watchman uh, swings its large halberd at you, and does not succeed at all swings and hits the metal walls behind you it is a new round olgram would you like to make a uh, athletics roll oh i most certainly will you are pushing hard against it but does not want to give <sighs> inspiration die uh 11. 11 it's not giving a, uh, an inch is there oh. anything I can do to assist that? <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm coming from the door. Okay. Okay, never mind. All right. Um, the spider attacks you, Puck. Yeah, but... And it does not... The good news, it does not attack you with its kind of butchery blade that's really sharp. The bad news is it's hitting you with a small little poison needle shuttle. Yep. Um, and it punches out with, that with a 14. That is my armor class. It just barely hits you. You take seven points of piercing damage. Mm. Okay. And that's not the problem. Oh, I know. But I do have resistance to poison. Seven, seven points of piercing damage. It's not that type of poison. You need to make a constitution saving throw as this paralytic poison starts to oh, that's right. flush through your body. Mm-hmm. Forgot about that. Oh, I uh, did not. 18. You resist the effects of the poison. <laughs> oh! You need to get this door open. Puck, you are <laughs> up. Coming back. Um. <coughs> I'm gonna uh stab at the uh, spider with my spear. What about your? Mm-hmm. Okay, stab away. It's right there. Oh. Natural one. Natural one. You've got your spear somehow caught slightly in this weird grilled wall that's fallen behind you that's got you caged in, and you're going to be at disadvantage to your next attack if right. you use it. I also, after that damage I took, should have made a save for that fireball or the flaming spear. Uh, no, it's not next to you. You don't need to make that. Uh, it's concentration. Comes concentration. Oh, to maintain it. To maintain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, seven. The flaming sphere has fallen out of existence, and Puck is looking is pretty south. bleak. The watchman uh, strikes at you. That has got to be a hit. Um, he has failed so many times. Let me double check. Uh, he has hit you with a 23. Yeah, Seven points of slashing damage as the halberd cuts across your chest. Puck trapped up above. It is a new round. Uh, Avius, Elmon, anything you can do? Yeah, is there anything I can do? I can't think of anything. Olgram's at the top of the ladder, and he's the only one in that space. I mean... It's like he's inside the ceiling a couple feet, and he's pushing and pulling and cursing. So I'm going to be... I'm going to kind of get up the first couple rungs of the ladder, and then as soon as that door opens up, I'm... If I have to 
climb over through or around Olgrim to get into the room, I will. Okay. So basically, as soon as that door st- opens... We'll make a perception roll real fast. New. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, I, I'm going to cast Earth uh, Armor on myself. All right. Just as a Actually. preemptive... Yes. Um, a bit of desperation now. Are there... Are there, there's windows in this room? Not in this room, no. Okay. So it's just walls. This is a quiet bedroom area, very sealed okay. off. Okay. Okay. Um, I wonder if this construct could get in there. Puck. I don't know. There is a unnatural sense of magic that emanates from above in one of these balconies, and this magic swarms around the uh, central part above you. This magic is blue and gray um, twisting spirals that mesh together and move around, and it creates an area of weird chaoticness. Make an arcana roll for me, for you to make any kind of sense of this. It's true, arcana? Arcana. Should have an arcana skill. Four. Four. You are not sure what's going on however you do see one you see bad news i'm afraid even more and some good news two more arms are bringing a watchman and a clockwork spider in, also into this area however the spider one is caught up and in, 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 in evaporated by this magical energy it brushes next to it it turns to glass and then is destroyed when it's gently put down on the ground however the second watchman arrives at the far corner and bup, 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 bup. the active clockwork weaving spider is attacking you with its blade and strikes at the bad situation puck here with a 14, five, 14. Yeah. You are sliced brutally by its big blade for 10 points of slashing damage. We're coming. Hang in there. Again, your magic spells seem things re- things seem really, really weird with your magic spells. You are not sure what's going to happen when you cast a spell to make things even worse. Bump, bump, bump. Puck is up. Where's that ring? <laughs> yeah. Uh, as a bonus action, uh, three it? bombs of the summer court on myself. Okay. Do not roll those six-sided dice. Uh, you've de- declared you are casting all three of those on yourself. Instead, I need you to roll three 1d12s, and you will subtract six from each die. So you may very well heal yourself, but with this chaotic energy, oh. you may end up hurting yourself. Do you need another 12? So you're doing 3d12 minus six. You can go into the negatives. Uh, 18. 18. Minus six, 12. Minus six from each die. Oh. Minus 18. No. Completely nullifies. No, minus six from each die, so I could... Yeah, so, so two, five. three, minus three, it's zero. It's zero. Yeah, okay. You've right. not hurt yourself, oh, you have not healed <laughs> yourself, and the balm of the summer court has created no effect as the weird energy created from the gray ascent that is swirling above yeah. you is creating chaos to your magic. Uh, I'm going to turn into a bear. Poof! Puff! Puck turns into a puff. bear. <laughs> Poof! Puff! Puck! Um, you are able to, just at the last second, Jimmy Deanna out of the fencing behind you, so it uh, gets absorbed into your form. You do not leave it behind you. And I think that's your action? Yes. All right. Any movement, or are you good? Uh, yeah, I'll disengage and... Oh, that would be a bonus action. No, that would be... I'll no. use my bonus action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You so, already did it. Um, no, I'm... Uh, Input. All right, Puck the bear is uh, attacked. The bear is not attacked with a brutal cleaver. The bear is attacked with a small little probing needle. How many things are close to him? Um, there is two right now with a third clockwork guy closing in. Jeez. Um, Jesus. Natural 20. Oh. <laughs> Puck, you have been pierced by this needle and you take six the bear form of you takes seven points of piercing damage and you need to make a bear's constitution saving throw as the poison starts rippling through the bear muscles. Ten? Ten! And your muscles seize up 
and you will lose control of yourself. You are paralyzed currently. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, Elmon, Avius, anything you guys would like to do? Otherwise, we will move on. God, am I back at the line again? Is Holgram? Oh, uh, I may have skipped you. I am so sorry. Um, let's go to Holgram. It is very, I'm so sorry. Holgram, <laughs> go ahead and make a <laughs> athletics roll. And this is not an easy athletics roll. Not easy. I'm trying. I'm trying. A 23. Is enough. Really? <laughs> you have pushed. I mean, that was good. You have pushed and pushed and pushed, and you've got this thing, this hatch, halfway open. It is not race through. It is scrape and pull yourself through awkwardly. But you've got enough mo- uh, opening for you. I'm trying to push and uh, try and grab th- this now bear that's <laughs> right there. Uh, Can I get through? Uh, you can't even get up the ladder. Olgrim's blocking the way. And then, yeah, I can't climb over Olgrim? Uh, it's Olgrim. It's your your Olgrim turn right now. squeezing through. Yeah, it's a squeezing. I need, I need I need more room to get up through. Can I push Olgrim up? Uh, you wouldn't be helping him right now. Okay. <laughs> and you don't even see Puck at this point, uh, Olgrim. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't see Puck. So I don't see Puck gotta know he's in danger right yeah you can see some automated feet that are walking past you with purpose okay <sighs> I need to uh, 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 this thing is fighting me I need to open it further um, it's just crazy yeah it's your choice you can wait till next turn and try and make some more rolls to try and force it up all the way or you can spend time squeezing yourself through right now yeah, I need to uh I need to force this open. Okay. I'm going to uh, spend my my uh, surge. Your action surge. All right, you have a full action. You want to use it to try and force it open? Force. You may make an athletics roll. Good luck. <laughs> does it seem like it has more give or am I fighting just as much? It's a not does it's it would snap back down oh, <laughs> if it could. Okay. Uh, a uh, 15. 15, it does not budge further. Yeah. Um, however, something else happens, Olgrom. You hear a tremendous crash from above as a, as a second set of four walls, 30 by 30, come crashing down, getting the first one and unlodging it and sending it down into the room below where there's a line of holes that open up to create a secondary set of a trap that comes crashing down into the bedroom. It's kind of designed this way, but also not because it actually bisects the bed and the bed gets shattered in wood and stuff goes flying everywhere. Um, books go flying, get destroyed, and it comes down. And uh, Avius, make a dexterity saving throw as this metal comes out of the ceiling, crunching down. Worse? Okay. Going from bad to worse. 13. 13. You, don't t- you take six points of bludgeoning damage. And you are trapped with the rest of the group inside this uh, bedroom area. That was going, and I, have, I be- um, believe I was now asking you guys what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Elmon and Avius. Right now my extra 15. Yeah, I mean, I'm just waiting for the moment that I can get through again. If I have to climb over, around, or through Olgrim to get into the room, I will. Yeah, it's a narrow ladder. It's a narrow half hole he's in, and he's throwing and wedging. I'm, you have to wait for him to get up or wait for him to get down. Okay, I mean... Uh, There's enough room for you to get no through. Close if I, leave. I can't think of anything I can do. Okay. So, I can't see Puck! So, is the ceiling wood? No. How is it staying up? It's stone. There's columns and that kind of stuff. But a box is just... Yeah, the, the ceiling oh. has a, 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 a seam, a, a rectangular seam that's set up to allow this thing to come through. Right, so the middle portion, what's holding it up? <coughs> Excuse me. A column type things? Okay. Anything you want to try, uh, Avis, or, or do you want to wait? I don't have anything to try at the okay. moment. Okay. Um... Uh, 
Um. Yes, no, maybe so. Oh, I don't, never mind. Nope. Okay. Nope. Um. Puck, you are attacked with advantage as you are paralyzed by the clockwork, and he strikes with a 16. Does that hit the bear? Uh, I go back into Puck form. Why do you go back into Puck form? Is it, no, I'm talking about a strike. I armor oh, class. Oh, I'm sorry. Does a 16 hit the bear? Yes. Um, he hits for seven points of slashing damage to the bear form. You're still in the bear form. Yep. All right. It is a new round. Olgrim, you were at the start of the round. Since I missed you up last time, I'm remembering now. You are still pushing at the door, yeah? The pushing hatch. at the door. I don't know why I'm rolling. I don't know why you're rolling damage. both. Uh, no, I was rolling a damage die. All right. Like, uh, 25. With tremendous, desperate effort, <laughs> you push the hatch and you break some weird spring mechanism so it does not close anymore. And you've got it completely, not completely open, but 90 degrees open. And you can now easily get in and out. Uh, okay. Um, um, my move will then consist of uh, getting up through and looking where Puck is. All right, you come and clamber quickly out, and you see that uh, no Puck anywhere, but your favorite bear mount is uh, collapsed on the ground. It's not moving. You think Puck is dead. You're not sure how the bear thing works. And he's surrounded by a weird clockwork spider and two of the clockwork automatons with their halberds. And your turn is done. You are now in that upper chamber. Alrighty. And again, there's machinery and things clanking and everything's crazy and chaotic. Um, there's a lot of trouble up here. Puck is down. Bum, bum, bum. The clockwork spider slashes at the bear with its blade with a 10. Nope. Oh, no. Uh, with advantage, I rolled two five. I think I rolled two. Um, it misses. Super nice. Um, bup, bup, bup. Puck, you're up. <laughs> your turn is over as you're paralyzed. You may now, after your turn is over, make a constitution saving throw. Is my inspiration dice. All right. I should have done the first time. Oh. Uh, t- uh, 25. All right, so you are no longer paralyzed. You are in bear form and you are mobile, but your turn is over. Uh, Avius, you are next. <clears throat> uh, Avius climbs up the ladder through the hole and... Really? You want to be up here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I I'm ready of... for it. Just fireball me right here. <laughs> <laughs> I want... Ah, that... How big is the cage? Uh, 30 by 30. Not big. No. No. <laughs> um. You knew going in it was a one-way trip. <laughs> <laughs> and I do uh, elemental orb. So you're down in the... No, no, no. I oh, you went up. Okay. You scamper up the ladder. You are up there. You mm-hmm. see this craziness. You can also see mm-hmm. Avius. Mm-hmm. There are two mechanical claws moving around from the ceiling, one of which has a watchman in its hand, the other one which has uh, a clockwork spider, and they're moving towards this area, just for the next round, FYI. How far away are they? Uh, 50, 40, 50 feet. I'm gonna... No, I'm gonna do... uh... Oh, I guess I'm on. Wait, I can I can say something, right? I'm conscious yeah. now. Don't use <coughs> magic. You're but, at disadvantage. But he says in meta form. <laughs> oh, that's right. I can't even. I'm a fucking bear. <laughs> Smokey says, "Put out campfires." <laughs> and I don't eat, and I don't understand that. Um, what are you gonna speak bear? Nope. I'm gonna cast. Where is it? Uh, he'd probably ignore you anyway. <laughs> can the bear speak? <laughs> English? Oh. Nothing? No, I'm not not, I've already You're not English, but come on. I'm not even going to look it up. I'm going to cast Arc Lightning. Arc Lightning! Um, I, at I the spider. <laughs> it would be on here. It would be. All three? Um, all three. All three, all right. 
So four, four, four. All right. Uh, lightning lashes out and it turns from your crazy arcs halfway to clear s- streams of electrical energy, which you're not familiar with why the heck it's doing that. And it lights up the clockwork and empowers it and gives it additional energy and it moves with extra vigor. You have damaged it in no way whatsoever as the chaos of the blue and gray twisting mass of magic above you has affected your spell. Um, bum bum bum. Elmon, you're the last of the party, bizarrely enough. What a time to be last. Um, I will... You're in the bedroom currently. I'm not in the hole and... Yeah, I'm getting up into <coughs> the, um, room. Uh, you grab on, you leap up, grab onto a middle rung, pull yourself up. Your feet never even touch the ladder. Yeah. Uh, and you're flying out of the hole, yeah, and in midair, what are you doing? Uh, angling so that I land in the room, and the bow's already out, and arrows start flying at Puck's trapped in the corner. There's two automatons and a clockwork weaving spider on him. One of the auto- automatons, okay, fire away. 16 is a hit. Is it the original one was damaged? Yeah, so one of them is injured. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me my fire the find it. Uh, no, you had the clockwork, is who you hit with that one. The the okay. the weaving spider, yeah. All right, um, and then your spear missed. So a mere 16 points of damage. 16 is huge, uh, massive damage. You may strike again, it's still on its feet, but that was huge. Uh, 26. Is a hit. For, uh, 16 more points of damage. All right, 32 points of damage, and the bear has this sigh of relief as this clockwork automaton drops its halberd, which almost hits you, Puck, uh, and then it breaks apart in twain. Automaton, get in here! You hear some creaking of metal as your Uh friendly automaton is climbing up behind you. There's one, however, that is still functional, and it is attacking you, Puck. This guy swings his halberd, and I cannot remember these numbers to save my life. Sorry. Uh, 21. <laughs> yeah. Puck, you are hit for seven points of slashing damage. Uh, so the bear, he goes, uh, the bear dissipates back into Puck. The bear is sliced away. And Puck is left standing. How much? How many hit points do you have left? Uh, three. Puck is left there standing, staggering, blood covered, barely hanging on to life. It is a new round. It is an Olgrim. You're our leader. Uh, yay. Uh, <clears throat> oh, and at the end of that round, this guy has been brought in. Another autonomous, uh, uh, a watchman and another uh, weaving spider have arrived machines dropped into this enclosure 30 by 30 foot enclosure it goes 30 feet up there is absolutely no ceiling though it's not a cage if you will more of a fenced in area right and there's two of these i don't know if that matters there's one that dropped down into the bedroom and then another one that dropped on top of it how tall 30 feet okay all right olgrim uh moving to uh Attack the weaving spider that is attacking Puck. Closing into Puck and attacking that. Okay. It has been lightly injured. Lightly singed. Lightly singed is fine with me. 22 to hit. Is a hit. Five points of damage. Okay. Second attack. Uh, gee, I'm not getting these numbers. Seven. Is a miss. And that charges your sword, right? Uh, yeah. Always remembering. Okay. And this attack where you heard it, was this like a careful tactical attack? Are you watching your surroundings? Is this is a desperate attack. What's your motivation as you're attacking? I'm curious. Uh, to get its attention and draw the distance. So uh, sacrificing uh, more of the tactical attention to get to and draw this one. All right. You have got its attention. It swipes with its blade and misses you entirely instead of attacking Puck. Puck, you're up. <clears throat> uh, I want to use my bonus action to disengage and... Oh, sorry. Hold on one more time. 
Uh, the clockwork, the newly arrived one, closes in on Elmon, and Elmon, it attacks you with its little probing needle mm -hmm. that you know all too familiar with. <laughs> It reaches out and tries to stick you. You try and dodge out of the way, and it gets a 15 to hit. That would hit. It hits. You take seven points of piercing damage. Okay. And need to make a constitution saving throw. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember this poison. Which will be at, <laughs> which will be at advantage. How so? Uh, 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 my greater fa favorite enemies. Additionally, you have advantage on saving throws against spells nice. and abilities used by a greater That's the reason why you became enemy. the greater I will also be using and is my inspiration. <laughs> He's well. done with this wow. paralyzing stuff. <laughs> uh, and oh, you yeah. said Constitution, so yes. that would be twenty-three. Twenty-three. You would completely ignore, and you're you're set. Nice. Um, now I'm sorry, Puck. I think it was your turn. Uh, yeah, I want to dis use my bonus action to disengage. All right. Nimble escape. You can kind of get out a little bit out of the way then. And go down the ladder. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're moving, you can get to the ladder, um, okay. and you can get down the ladder, yeah. Okay. Puck, you are now in the bedroom. Awesome. Um, another cage. <laughs> Avius. Right. Avius hops down the ladder. Okay. Avius drops down, any action, are you good? Um, I'm good. Okay. Um, <laughs> bump, 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 bump. Elmon. Um... Don't look at me. <laughs> Are we leaving? You hear a voice, by the way, Elman. Uh huh. You hear a voice from a balcony um, say, I'm so sorry. That's all you hear. F you. Um, I. Do I. Do I have a. Uh, do I know where. Can I see where on the balcony it is? Uh, make a perception roll with advantage. Uh, yeah, 22. You can see a man on a balcony who is moving some levers on a machinery, and he is a, uh, a plump fellow wearing glasses who's paying you some partial attention. Um, he's gonna... Hunter's Mark is my bonus. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll show and you go. Name. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I will shoot him with an arrow. All right. Yeah, I, well, he, I told him to come. Oh, up, okay. So he should be up. He should be up there. Um, is that spider engaged with me yet? Oh, the spider is, yes. Okay, so I'll be shooting at disadvantage, I assume? Yes. Okay. Is that the, the good guy on top Yeah. 17. 17 arcs out and hits. <clears throat> Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Got it. And then a second arrow shot. 24. That's also a hit. What was the first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight. Good. Yeah. Ten points of damage. Okay. You shoot two arrows, you hit the guy, and... Oh, wait, hold up. New I'm is. sorry. Um, for both shots, I need to add 1d6 here for damage because of the hunter's mark. Oh, yeah. So that would be five, Ooh. 11 extra points of damage. Wow. Sorry about that. So 29. 29 total. You hear this, <laughs> this yelp, and he drops down uh, wounded or dead, you're not sure, but he has disappeared behind some console and is not a factor right now. And I assume the mechanical arms have stopped now as The well. mechanical arms have paused currently. Okay. Um, there's still machinery moving around, but the two nasty uh, dropping things into the fencing area have stopped What's moving. What's happening with the, with the magic? Did you get him? Uh, the magic has oh, not hit changed at all, as far as you're aware of. Um, is my automaton upstairs now? Yours is, and it will be going in a bit. Uh, the wounded... Is it wounded? Unwounded. Um, Watchman <laughs> turns around and attacks you, Olgram, for a... Come on. 19. <clears throat> no. Slams and misses. <laughs> the other automaton, automaton Watchman attacks your guy and hits him and damages him pretty bad, but more importantly, it loses its leg again. 
and it starts to hop and falls back down. Uh, Avius make a dexterity saving must throw. Be some garbage. As a mass <laughs> of know. automaton comes dropping down. Four. Four. Clunk. You take six points of bludgeoning damage as this thing crashes and pins you to the ground. You are now prone on the ground. What's the AC you were rolling against? Uh, no, it just fell on top of you. It didn't try and hit you. <laughs> that's done. That's done. We're back at the new round. It is Olgram, your turn. Be um, great if I had an AC of like 50 and I could jump off cliffs. The yeah. untouched <laughs> Olgram here. <laughs> <sighs> okay, uh, engaging the spiders are the way more annoying for me. Yeah. Actually, but I also want to take charge. I'm going to start with the spider. Okay. Uh, the wounded spider in front of me, hopefully. Uh, is a non-natural 20 with full damage, 11 points. Wow, nice. It is still standing, but you hacked off its little proboscis needle thing. Oh, okay. Second attack is uh, 24. That's a hit. With the seven points. It had exactly seven remaining. You have slain that spider. There's only one left in this fenced-in area. Nicely done. Um, 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 before proceeding, <laughs> who's up with me? Me. Just, just me. Yeah. Who, is it's someone engaged you with you? Uh, yeah, one of the, uh, the other spider. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the auto, the our, the good, uh, the good robot is up there too. No, he fell down. Yeah, he just fell he down. Was, on he's top laying of on top of Avius. Uh, so the creature that it's I attacked me and died was not near you. So I'll just have to keep that in mind. Okay, I'm fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, the bonus clockwork weaving spider that is uh, fresh and attacking Elmon. Damn, spiders attack me. Uh, attacks you with its blade and totally misses and will be not engaged with. It's so distracted, it's not engaged Ooh, with you. Oh, yummy. Um, so it kind of maybe stumbles around and you're <laughs> able to step back away from it. You get a free disengage. It gets caught in the grating. Uh -huh. um, and then a massive blast of bizarre twisted strange magic launches out from this weird glowing area above and strikes down upon Olgrim. Olgrim, you Certainly need not prepared for this. Olgrim, you need to make a saving throw to avoid this. You seriously want to avoid this. Would you like to know what the saving throw is? Would you like to give me an inspiration die? I know. <laughs> the saving throw is chaotically the sixth attribute from the top. That would be charisma. Charisma. <laughs> You sense this charming nature trying to overwhelm oh. you. <laughs> and you need to make a charisma saving throw as this horrific chaotic magic attacks you. Great. Great. How about a 15? 15 is partial. You hold up your hand, you try and uh, stave off the blow and your uh, shield and shield arm are turned to ice. Not frozen. Turned to, to ice. Fantastic. Just uh, a foot, not an arm. Just uh, deeper than your elbow. So from your fingers down to your upper arm area. Okay. Uh, is turned to ice and you can move the arm, but the whole arm now is moving as like one thing you don't have any control over the fingers it's ice okay the fuck? this is not magic of a normal area this is crazy ass deep horrifically chaotic this is things that the cultists <coughs> would be dying to get their hands on this is the thing the cultists would love um this is Literally crazy stuff yeah um bump 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 a uh, puck is up you are safe in the bedroom area. Uh, <laughs> safe is a relative word right now. And you I'll just and you, you just sensed another massive pulse of crazy unnatural energy. Um, what happened to? No, nothing happened to anyone else from that pulse. No, it attacked Ol Olgrim. Uh, my intent is to do uh, some cure wounds on myself. Okay. I'm hoping I'm not involved. My magic works down here. Let's find out. Uh, you can make an arcana roll. To determine. Actually, uh, no, it doesn't count. Make arcana roll with advantage. 
Uh, 13. Uh, you believe you are still affected by the magic above. <sighs> okay, I still gotta do a level 3 cure wounds. Any potions? I don't. I have a potion. It's, I'm... I, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, level 3 cure wounds. Okay, uh, <laughs> level 3 cure wounds, go ahead and cast it and heal away. <clears throat> Is it with D12s? No. <laughs> Uh, 16. All right, Puck, in the chaotic magical energy, uh, you cast Cure Light Wounds. What was the healing that you did? 16. You deal yourself 16 points of damage. It does the opposite effect of what you would like. I'm unconscious. And Puck drops himself and is barely breathing. Avius, you, you are on the ground with this machine on top of you. Puck touches himself to heal. Yelps and drops down right next to you. You see his eyes looking at you. He's barely able to move, and he's just murmuring some weird sound. Puck, 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 puck. And Avius, it is your turn. I push. A Make con- a strength roll with advantage. With advantage. Oh, uh, let's see. That'd be that'd be. Uh, oh, carry the one. Ten. Ten. Uh, it takes your entire move uh, to get it off of you, but you're able to stand up and get this thing off of you. We still have an action and a bonus action. Um, I have nothing. I'm not a healer. Okay. Wait. You have a potion wait. of healing. Potion. I take my potion of greater healing and gently take Puck's head in my lap oh. and open his mouth okay uncork this potion and gingerly pour oh. into puck's mouth nice <laughs> tastes like ginger 17 points all right i think you're fine what's your maximum hit points buck uh 48. All right. He pours this grater, which is the best potion. We got. You just found that one, too. Yeah. He pours it into your mouth, Puck, and the, as the magic starts to go and warm through your body, it changes form and is transmuted by the chaos Damn it. that is generated by this incredibly powerful artifact known potion? as the Grey of Ascent. You take that much damage, which isn't your maximum hit points. You are not killed outright. However, you now take one failed death saving throw as you are dealt damage. Shit. If you have three failed death saving throws, you are dead. And it is... I'd, I'd, I'd like to say... Uh, <laughs> it's stupid. You know, like any any death spells that we have <laughs> might actually work the counteract. I no, might. don't don't listen to me. I'm a fighter. Don't listen Wait, to me. Uh, well... Elmon, you're up. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Run, Elmon! Don't stay here. Run to where? Points to the portal. He, he waves an icy shield fist over <laughs> to the that hatch. Way. The where the um, Sonor. Do I know where where he fell to? Absolutely. You've been you've been keeping an eye on that spot. Oh, yeah, and I have the hunter's mark. Yep. Anyways, uh, do I do I have a line of sight on him? And not only that, you have the hunter's mark. It it has not triggered that free replacement of it. Right. So, so he is still, still alive. alive. Yeah. Um, Good catch. Do I have a line of sight on him? You do not. You need to get a better angle somehow. Is do I see any way to do that? Am I able to scale this? Absolutely. Uh, all right. Um, it's my, essentially like um, six inch bands um, about a foot apart. Puck it even if you really spent time squeezed between them. It's not like a tight thing. So you could climb up it like a ladder. You're surrounded by a million ladders, essentially, of this field, of this fence. I glance over at Olgram, protect the rest of the party, and I start scaling the um, uh fence. All right. You climb up the fence. You are at the top of it, and then you leap from the fence over towards a claw holding an automaton in stasis and make a uh, acrobatics roll. It's pretty close to make a with advantage. Uh, 21. All right. You leap and grab onto this claw, ah. step onto this uh, automaton. It says, identify yourself, and you are trying to <coughs> hop and make your way towards it. 
Olgrim, you, oh, I'm not excited about this one either. Olgrim, you are in a fenced in area. There is a watchman and a watchman here. There is also a uh, slightly stunned weaving spider for the moment. The concern is the watchman, one of which turns and starts to try to climb up after you, um, Elmon, and it cannot. It doesn't know what it's doing, and it refuses to let go of its halberd as well. So it's just trying to grab. It doesn't quite mm-hmm. have the leg <laughs> bend to get going. However, the other watchman right next to Olgrim is attacking you. Okay. Um, what is your armor class? Um, With your shield. If we consider I am not using the shield. Let's consider your shield. Uh, it has me at full at uh, 20. AC. Okay. If you are hit with a 20 or a 19 or an 18... Uh, your shield oh, left God. side is hit, which would be bad as it is made of ice. If I decide to use it in my defense posture, if I s- save it and go down to an 18 armor class? If you completely expose that side, it would drop. You will do a negative to a six. Oh, okay. Your choice. I got no choice. So it's 20 or 16. Your choice. Oh, well, 20. It's Oh, well, it would drop me to a 16, but I... I would protect you. You would protect protect that body part. I would protect that body part. (laughs) I'm shield biter for a reason. Uh, The shield will be used. All right. Instinctively trying to hold up this this awkward thing of ice. 18, 19, 20 on a natural roll, or if they somehow get on the total roll. On the well, that changes it. Mm -hmm. I'll stick with a 16. Okay, you keep your shield arm to the side, unless I roll a natural 20, and then he still might get you. All right, this was the watchman who is at you. Here comes his attack. A 19. (laughs) He hits you, but does not hit your your icy shield arm and shield. Um, That is seven points of slashing damage, and he is turning his chest towards you and opens up a small little opening. You can see he's about to launch something from his chest. Not too different from what was launched at you by that larger guy before. Yep. Um, Oh my God, I am so nervous. Um, (laughs) You? Yeah, I am nervous. Party wipe. Uh, We're up at the top. Olgrim, you are starting. Okay. Uh, The attack begins. I can still attack with this. Yep. Free arm. You've got a watchman right in front of you. Watchman will get attacked. With a 17. Is a hit. Eight points of damage. Okay. Second attack. Eight. Uh, 18. Is a hit. 10 points of damage. Total of 18. You have hacked him hard. He's still standing, um, but he's not looking so good. The clockwork weaving spider is closing in on Come you. Come on, you Olgrim. silly marionettes. It has both functioning weapons, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think that one does. Yeah. Um, let's see. Odd is odd. It's going to probe you. Probes you with its little needle to paralyze you with a 14 Will not succeed. versus your lowered armor class. Ah, oh, I thought I got you. Oh, let me double check. Faster. No, that was a 12. Yeah, I didn't get you. Okay, um, it fails, and you're able to dodge out of that way. Next up is Puck. Puck, you're making a con... No, not even a constitution saving throw. It's just a flat roll. 10 or higher, you get a good check. A 9 or less, you get another death saving throw X against you. 9. Oh, sh... And I I also... It's scary. I forgot to mention, if it's a 1, it's double Xs. Mm. All right, you have a second death saving throw, Puck. One more failed death saving throw, and you are dead for good. Yeah. Your turn is done. It is possible. Manually, to yeah, to stabilize up. tomorrow. Now, I th- medicine roll. Yeah, just a regular yeah. medicine roll. Or I could do a poisoned elemental orb and see. If it has an option. You certainly could. It's just crazy. You it might always try. Um, who is up next? It is Elmon Yabe. No, 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 no. It is Avius. Sorry. Avius. Okay. Uh, what do I do? I'm not even there. I Bandage him? I, I got or... nothing to say. Try some weird opposite spell? I, I don't even know. Since opposites and chaos. Right, right. right may not work that right. way. But right. you've got a shot with the medicine. I'll do a medicine roll. That's 
for 10. Um, you climb. <clears throat> no, no, he's right there next to you. I'm sorry. You guys are both yep. down at the bottom. Okay. Um, this is a medicine. Yeah. <clears throat> you need to make a DC 10. You have succeeded. <laughs> Puck has been stabilized. You no longer make saving throws. You still have zero hit points. Um, in one to four hours, you will gain one hit point. So that's the bad news. Good news is you're no longer making death saving throws. However, if you take any damage of any kind in this chaotic, swirling mass of energy, uh, out of the way of a one hit point will be another day's death saving throw. Away from the portal hole that he's right underneath. He's not right underneath it. Okay. I am. Um, next up is Elmar. Do I see Sonor at any point? Have uh, I gained line of sight on him? You have not, but you have dramatically closed the distance and some more crazy jumping might get you there. I will continue to do that. But you also see Olgrim down below facing three enemies. I will go for Sonor. Okay. You <laughs> see luck. a balcony that you were leaping. It's Actually... A- <laughs> I can take bow shots at the Yeah. Okay. You're above them maybe 30 feet. No, 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 you're higher than that. You're like 40 feet, you 50 keep feet. Going. Oh, keep go. going. Don't wait for me. Okay. Um I mean cuz that that the 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 I have to neutralize the gray ascent. Um which I assume I have to neutralize Sonor to neutralize the Great Ascent. So, um, yeah, I'm going to continue to travel towards as um, I'm turning. I'm I'm looking at towards Olgrim, indecisive for a moment. He gives me the go ahead. It's I'm, not even a wave. I just kind of look at yeah. you and give you that. Yeah, as I'm turning, like starting to like shift the bow towards towards Olgrim, and so I turn and continue to pursue Sonor. Okay. There is a balcony that is some distance to leap for. You will need to make an acrobatics roll, and if you fail, you will fall. You will have a chance to catch yourself and not fall all the way. The catch is you will be falling dangerously close to this undulating mass of chaotic energy that's uh, in the ceiling. (laughs) Don't do that. (laughs) Don't fall in. Okay. Okay. All right, um, I'm he's gonna make, carefully chosen uh, the right die. Yep, I'm going to make the jump. Acrobatics roll. Elmon leaps through the air. 15. And succeeds and grabs onto a balcony, and you hit hard on the side. You take one point of bludgeoning damage and pull yourself up. It is not graceful like normal. It is desperate, and you get yourself onto the balcony, and you can see Sonor's foot for a brief moment as he is lying on the ground you see his foot and it just gets pulled just accidentally um behind the console you know just where he's at you think you can get there in the next round so looking briefly at where this gray swirling stuff is where it's emanating from is there i mean is there anything physical that it's coming from like knowing what the gray ascent is i'm assuming it's it's got to be him that it's you see nothing that it's emanating okay. from. Okay, then I will continue to head towards Sonor. All right, Olgram, you have two clockwork uh, watchmen. Downstairs. One closes in on you. Another one attacks you. You keeping your shield out of the way? Yep. Um, 12, it swipes and misses with its halberd. It's a new round. Olgram, you're up. You are surrounded by a spider and two watchmen. Uh, the watchmen that I had attacked previously? Yes. I'm going to attack again. Go for it. A 22, five points of damage. Is a hit and a destruction. He has been destroyed. Uh, the next one of the two, which one appears to be most damaged? Um, the spider. Spider is my next target. Uh, is a 17 with uh, six points of damage. 17 with six points of damage. Got it. It is not dead, but you have heard it. That was Olgrim. It is its turn. It is done trying to poison you. It's just going to try and hack you apart. (laughs) I believe that is what we call a hit in the business. That is a 19. Will succeed. Uh, 10 points of slashing damage against your sword arm side. (laughs) 
That's your first wound, though? Three no, it's a second. That, if you will. Second wound. My heavy armor mastery takes three nice. off of that. You're hanging in there. You're, you're looking good, though. Yeah, he's, everybody else is... Uh, Puck, you, you do not have to make any death saves. You're done. Uh, Avius, you're still in the bedroom next to the ladder. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to kind of move Puck and myself a little bit away from the ladder. Okay, you can move as far as you can up against the fencing area. And then do another medicine roll. Is there... No, points? there's no... Mm-mm. No. Nope. Then can I do a praying roll? Can, what do I do you... a, can I do a yell to the gods roll? Sure, well, you can, well, it's not a roll, but you can yell to the gods. What do you want to I say? I don't know. Uh, Is he yelling at the moon? <laughs> I just... I stroke Pug's head. <laughs> okay. And I just say... Aww. Oh. <laughs> Just I really want to hate that wizard, little buddy. Uh, no, it's don't. not. <laughs> don't, don't Just die. Trust me. There's so many things we could have done together. Here's a half bed I could place you on. <laughs> uh, I have Elma on. You're up. All right. Uh, I am continuing my pursuit to, to on Sonor. All right. You're near the very top of this clockwork, and you see you're on one balcony, and there's some sort of stairs you can't even figure out. You're just going to leap over to the last balcony where Sonor is at. Sure. You need to make an acrobatics roll straight. Natural one. Whoa, no! You know how to make this interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no. You leap, you miss, you come up shy, and you hit a lower balcony well below and take. Oh, God. Uh, way down. 16 points of bludgeoning damage. And you crash awkwardly. And Senor. Uh, stands up and says, I'm so sorry. You can't even see him from where you're at. You're underneath him on a different balcony. And you hear more loud machinery kick in. (gasps) And there is a loud crack and boom as the entire clock face rips itself apart and pushes out into the open air outside of the clockwork. Attached to that clock is all the machinery that runs it, this weird big block of gears and grinding stuff. And that sucker extends out four giant spidery legs and pushes itself out uh, horizontally and starts digging into the outside of the clockwork. And it's got this clock attached with gears and stuff moving. And it becomes this 20 foot spidery thing that extends out and starts crunching down the side of the clockwork tower. You can see the holes of the legs piercing through. And that's what happens there. And clockwork watchman is attacking Olgram. And he hits you for 22 for seven. Let me double check. Seven points of slashing damage. That will be four points of slashing. With your heavy armor mastery. It is a new round. Olgram, you're up. Is that, yeah. <clears throat> Attacking the spider. A 21. Is a hit. Eight points of damage. You have stabbed the spider through the top and slain it. Much. It's gone. It's destroyed. Huge difference than your original encounter with it, huh? <laughs> uh, the uh, the uh, effort follows through as bits and, and uh, gearing flies up as the blade slashes through the air and goes into the next watchman. Okay. <laughs> Uh, for, uh, what is that, 24 for five points of damage. All right. So for it's mainly, he's just getting pelted with gears. <laughs> uh, you're getting pelted with gears. Um, you, uh, you said five? Five was the damage. You got it. Um, bump, bump, bump. Spider is gone. Puck is out. Let me just remove you. Avius, anything you want to do? Continue to reassure Puck? Yeah, I'm kissing his forehead. Okay. It's the most romantic series of turns. I've, or intimate, rather. Uh, Elmon. Yeah. You want to do, do what? Um, You're on a balcony that's halfway up this large, tall part of the clock tower. <laughs> Above you, maybe 15, 20 feet, is a duplicate balcony. Where Sanor is at. 
And am I being impacted by this, like, spider mechanism? No, it went out the other side of the building and is now climbing down the building. Okay. Um, do I recognize any immediate way up to the balcony that, that, that Sonor is on? Yeah, you can see all sorts of strange cogs and stuff that have now fired off that have allowed the launch of that creature. Uh-huh. So there's things that are loosely spinning now that you can try and grab onto and... Sure. Right on the way so up. Successful for me to this point. I will, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to I'm continue my pursuit against the Noor. Okay, here's what's going to happen, and it's kind of important. You are going to make an acrobatics roll as you grab onto some cog as it starts to spin up. If you are successful with a 15 or higher, you are able to engage Sonor, who is standing up there now, um, still badly hurt. You will be able to engage him, but he will be able to do some mild, devastating... Well, I'm mild, saying mild. Mild, devastating. Well, it's wait, mild. Wait, wait. There's one or the other. Yeah, it's a mild <laughs> Those are blast of, of chaotic, um, bad energy that will hit a lot of you. Small, like 2d6, 1d6 type of a thing. However, that would be devastating to Puck. <laughs> if you fail, it's going to take you two turns to get up there. If you get a 15 or higher, you're, you're trying to get this shortcut. You'll get up there now, but he will launch that attack. If you get a 20 or higher, you're able to catch him unaware and get him before he's able to launch that attack from the gray ascent that he has wrapped around his right wrist. So that is your acrobatics roll. <laughs> and go. Cool. Or it's is there graded, another right? option? It's a graded thing. What do you mean? Oh, we're staring at. I mean, he's looking up the skirt of. Some... No, it's not. No, not graded. No, not graded. It's all... yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. Twenty. Whoa! <laughs> Non-natural. Non-natural. That's okay. Non-natural. That's okay. But sixteen plus four, twenty. <gasps> You grab onto this cog, it starts to move. You, you made that off. roll with only a plus four modifier? Yep, it was a 16 with a plus four. I should punch you in your head and kiss you at the same time. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you leap with agility, you leap with agility between all these spinning huge cogs that release the giant spider thing, and you are instantly up and catch him by surprise. <clears throat> and you, he uh, turns around, he's got this crazy glowing uh, metal thing around his right wrist. He sees you, he thinks about launching some crazy attack from this massive swirling thing in the air behind him. Instead, his only action he has is to just say, I'm so sorry. I say, I'm so sorry, and um, I am, am I melee range to him? You are almost in hugging range with him. Okay. Try hugging him. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked before, it worked for Olgrim. Let's um, try this. <laughs> I will... He's drenched in blood from two huge arrows that are pierced deep into him. Um, will I get disadvantage if I fire an arrow? Uh, no. Okay. He's just not a factor. Okay. Um, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Okay, he's got a chance to avoid it with a normal shot. He tries to stagger back. Uh, 21 to hit. Is a hit. He is wounded. And he is hunter marked. <laughs> Hunter's marked. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fourteen points of damage. All right. Fourteen points of damage. He takes the arrow to the chest, staggers back, falls over his machine and levers, and goes spinning down. If I can snatch the gray ascent from him before Ooh. he goes, I would like to do that. You may make a sleight of hand roll. Ten. 10. You are not able to grab it. It goes spinning down and he goes falling and is impaled on the fencing thing that is pinning uh, Olgrim in place below and Lovely. separates in half when he hits it. Ooh. Chunks flying and upper chunks flowing into so your sorry. area. <laughs> Lower chunks falling out. Um, and a Clockwork Watchman has a chance to finish you off, Olgrim, or at least hurt you. <laughs> uh, 15 with your modified? New. 16, and you did not make it. It is a new round, Olgrim, you're up. What has happened to the Swirl of Magic now? 
Close it. Nothing yet. Close uh, it. It's a uh, 24 to hit 87 points of damage. Okay. Uh, continue? Uh, no, no, no. You do not need to continue. Okay. Uh, something very interesting happens. Don't like interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting thing happens. You bring down a violent blow and separate the midsection of this uh, automaton watchman guy in half, and it there's just piles of springs and cogs and <laughs> arms everywhere. I'm oddly happy about this. Okay, go ahead. Um, but there is also a bit of viscera, bloody viscera, that has just plopped into your section of the fencing. And within that viscera, you see there is a arm, a mouth wide open wide, and eyes, and a torso. And it's Elma. <laughs> That yeah. would be, and it says, <laughs> that would "Welcome to the up. library." <laughs> no. Around that arm, you see a, a grayish little looped band, a bracer almost, if you will, uh, around the right wrist. It is a, an item you've never seen before. It is an item that is very intriguing, so much so that you really need to have this. I need to have this. And Olgram, you step forward and you remove the device from the wrist and the magical chaos energy above dissipates and fades away and throbs a bit and then disappears. And Elmon, you look down with uh, satisfaction at your kill until you see Olgram with a big smile place the gray ascent over his right wrist with glee. Come on! Come on! (laughs) And we will stop there for tonight.